Hello, my name is Gabriel from Gaba QSA. In this video, we're going to talk about switches. So, in this case, we are going to talk about the difference, the differences between an unmanaged switch and a managed switch. So, here we have the, the few differences of few things on the whiteboard that I'm going to talk. And after that, I'm going to show you a real thing, so you, you can see the, the differences be, between them. So, let's talk about the basic, the unmanaged. So the unmanaged uh, switch, what it means is it works like a power strip. So you plug in the data in one port, and you will have data in the in the other port, and that's it. That is all that is going to do. is is very simple. Um, you cannot do almost anything else. So I mean, if you have maybe a small network or something like that, you can use it. But if you are going to use it in a real enterprise or for commercial use and you have a lot of people that would be good if that you opt for the other one so i'm going to uh, tell you the other ones the other is the manage so we have different uh, sizes i'm going to tell you this part here that is the the little one so here we have desktop the uh, desktop or the just the, the little one the the very tiny uh, switches and usually they come on 5 ports, 8 ports, 16, 24 and that's it. And you have the rakeable uh, switch, usually those are the ones that you put in a cabinet, in the rack cabinet, the network environment and usually they come on 16, 24 and 48 ports. So the big one and the small one. So here this is one of the big ones. So I'm going to show you a few later. Um, here we are going to talk about the, the manage. So the manage, you have two two kind of ports. You have the serial port and you have also the IP port. So you can manage them uh, through any of those uh, ways. So that is one thing. And here we have another uh, um, thing that is called, I mean, another feature. And here are all the features that I'm going to talk is port mirroring. So if you want to, let's say that you want to sniff someone, if you want to see the traffic and everything, it would be good if, if, you, if you can have this uh, feature. I mean, most of the real uh, switches, they, they have this kind of uh, features and that is great. So I'm going to explain you in, in this case. Let's say that you have one user that is here and then you have your main switch here that is connecting the whole network, the, the whole computers, uh, I mean all the computers on your network and everything. And if you want to sniff their, uh, I mean their, uh, this, uh, his traffic, if you want to sniff his traffic, what you have to do is, okay, you connect, you connect it to a hub, so because they have one, everything is connected to everything, so once you connect the one port, and you connect it, uh, you have another computer to another port, or maybe more than one, or three, or four, or I don't know, many as many computers as you want. Every time that, that you send a data, it will go out in in all the ports. Uh, when you receive receive data, it will do the same thing. So it's it's not smart. So in, in the switch, basically, once you send a data, it will go to all the, the ports, but once it finds the MAC address or where it has to go, so it will enable just two, those two ports and that's it. So basically that is how it works. So you you cannot sneak anybody else. So except if you have port mirroring, so that is why I'm explaining this. So in this case, if you want to do something simple, maybe you want to play with the Wireshark or something like that, you connect it, uh, one of, of, the, of the main ports to the hub and the other port to this will be your computer with Wireshark so you can sniff the traffic and this will be maybe the customer uh, I mean your customer or whatever or maybe uh, some employee that you want to track all the traffic that is one way but let's say that you have the employee here and you are here and then you say okay I'm going to um, I mean if you if you enable this uh, port mirroring what you're going to do is mirror this port and this one and then your the employee is here, you're here and then you can just listen all the, the traffic and that's it. It's very simple, very good. 
Another important thing is QoS, quality of service. So if you want to give priority to any of those ports, uh, you can say, okay, uh, port number one and three have more priority than, than the rest, and uh, that's it. So usually uh, that is one, one way. I'm, I'm not going to go very deeply on this, but uh, yeah, in another video I'm going to show you how, how you can use it and, and everything else. So here we have VLAN. VLAN is a virtual LAN, so let's say that maybe you have here a switch with 48 ports or something like that, and you're thinking, well, maybe management uh, is just one sector and sales is another sector and you don't want people from sales to see the computers from, I mean, of management. So what you can do is, okay, uh, you can create different VLANs and that way uh, you separate the, the, the network or otherwise you have to buy a different switch and make a different network. So that is one way. Uh, here you have another a protocol that is called SNMP is it's called Simple Network Management Protocol so this protocol is very good it will allow you to monitor uh, anything so if the, the, the switch has some, some issue or something like that you will get a report usually you can use Nexus I mean there is a software for that or if you have a UPS um, it's a back electric backup. So if you are thinking, oh, the, there is an outage or something like that, you're going to get an alarm uh, with that. So that is very good. I mean, everything that is in your network, I have this SNMP that would be awesome. Uh, spanning tree, span, spanning tree is something very very good because sometimes I I've seen in the real world that. You go to a company and say, hey, yes, oh, my, oh, my whole network is, is not working suddenly. Uh, and nobody can browse. I mean, nothing works. And then you start seeing the, the switch, like here, for instance, and it's blinking, 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 all, all the lights like crazy. And you're thinking, oh, oh but there is a loop on the network. That's why it's not, it's not working. And I've seen uh, these kind of cases, like maybe you go to a box, you know, up to a department like maybe marketing or something like that and they don't have more ports to connect more computers and then they buy those small switches and then they, they connect all those computers and then some suddenly someone left the company and they I mean and, and they see just one cable that is laying around and they say oh there is one port that is available okay let's connect it click and then that way everything is stop uh, everything is stop working because it makes a loop on the network and everything crash or if you go maybe to the data center the small uh, data department and you will see that there are cables hanging everywhere and all the things okay and you see that there is a loop and, and all of this so that is why a spanning tree works and it's very good so if you have some issue like that and you connect maybe go two ports and, uh, in the same switch you will you will see that this uh, protocol I mean this uh, feature will block or will disable those uh, ports so that way you won't have any any issue with on, on the network so that is one, one way to avoid those kind of uh, mistakes and also you have a, another feature that is very good is MAC filtering. So MAC filtering is, is very good. So if you want to protect your network and you say, okay, I have a, port, a switch of 48 ports and let's say I have 10 that are in, in use and the other are free and you don't want anybody else to see, oh, there is a free port here. Let's uh, connect my computer and then maybe they have a worm, a virus or whatever and they infect the network or they want to hack the network or whatever. So if that computer is not in the MAC address list, they are not going to be able to enter in the in the network. So that is, is great. So that is uh, one way. Oh, other, another option would be if there are some switches that they have the, the option to disable the ports so 
if you are thinking, okay, I have 48 ports, I have just only 10 computers, okay, I'm going to disable the rest, I'm going to leave just 10, and that way, yeah, you're going to be more protected. Also, if someone of, of those 10 people, they say, oh, I'm going to unplug the my computer, I'm going to plug my, mine, uh, because their computer is, is not on that list, on the MAC address list, it will not work. So that is uh, one thing. So uh, I'm going to show you here, I have a different uh, graphics. So if you are thinking, okay, how can I con connect the switches and other things? Let's say that you have switches, two switches, and then you want to use they have a like a special port, usually it's on the left and the right, and you can uh, link them together so that way it will act like a one switch, and that way you, I mean, if you have just 48 computers on your business or something like that, you're thinking, oh, um, there are more people coming to the business, I mean, we need more employees or something like that. You're thinking, okay, this is one way to do it, so I'm going to show you in in the real switch how you can uh, connect those things. So you have to uh, think uh, uh, that you have different switches, like the basic, it will be, maybe you might find something, a port called uplink, and you can connect both, or you may find <laughs> that all the ports are the same thing, and there are no distinction or anything like that, like you see here. So make sure that the speed, if you need a lot of speed, try to use gigabit, and if you are going to use the network maybe for browsing or something like that, okay, uh, 10, 100 will be okay. I, I suggest use CAT 6A, so that way you can uh, you can prove your the future, so you can keep things as high as possible, so that way in the future you, you can have everything that, that you know. So that is Basically it, I'm going to change the camera so we can see the, the switch. Okay, as you can see, here we have a Cisco switch. And here we have the, the different, uh, I mean, the number of ports. As you can see, it says 24 ports, 10, 100, 1000. That is the, the speed. Here we, you will see the, the light of the fan, the power, and everything else. And in this case here, as like I told you before, 24 ports, Cisco small uh, for business, a small Cisco small business, and here we have all the other ports that I was uh, talking about, so that way you can connect more than, than one switch and everything will be just in one network. And in the other side, I'm going to turn it around, so as you can see, we have the power, we have the model, and here we have the serial. So if we have to manage the, the switch, and for some reason you cannot use the IP or something like that, this will be one of the options. I'm going to show you a cable that is going to make the, all the difference. Usually you're going to get a cable like that, and then you connect it here, and then if the other end it will be something it will be like this and then that way you can connect it to your computer or you will need an adapter so that way uh, you can use it because most of the new computers they don't have this port so as you can see here I have an old computer in this old computer this old motherboard has the, the port so I can connect it here otherwise like I said you're going to need a USB serial that way you can connect okay here I have another switch this is a generic brand so as you can see when a 10 100 that's it switch 8 ports basic basic so this is, is no manage so as you can see here we have a port that is called uplink so if you want to connect another switch and you want to use it like in cascade in cascade or something like that so you have you want to link them both together you use that uh, switch or if you don't have any like that i mean all of them are the same thing you can use basically any of them it will do the the work okay here i have another one this is 2004 so it's it's a very old switch and i'm going to rotate it so you can see it 
Okay, here we have a, uh, an option, so we can use a external battery, so in case there is a sh shortage or whatever, here as you can see, you can use it in 110 or 220, depending on the country that you are, you see the serial number and everything else, and here as you can see, console, so console it would be the cable that I was talking before, so here for instance I have one cable, you connect it here, and then you connect the other one to the serial port or to the adapter USB serial, and that's it. I'm going to show you the other, the other side, as you can see. So in this case, the switch, I'm going to show you here in this, in this side, here we have the, the, the different uh, function that we are going to talk shortly in another video. And here we have all the ports that are just 10, 100. And in this case, just here we have, as you can see, we have is 10, 100, uh, 1000, just these two ports and, and that's it. And these are, are connected by copper, so that is all that you're going to to use in this case and I don't know in case you didn't notice but this uh, this port that you're going to you're going to need to buy some kind of adapter like SFP adapter is an optical so that way you're going to have optic instead of copper so that is a, a good thing about these kind of switches so I hope you have enjoyed this video. Remember click on like, subscribe, and if you want to see more of my classes, you can go to the playlist, and that way you can see the rest of, of my videos. Enjoy, bye.